this video guides us about the optimization process when there are more than one choice variables that is more than one independent variables because if we have a function in which we have only one choice variable it is easy to do but when it comes to a situation where there we have more than one independent or choice variables it becomes slightly complicated so this is the example that we are talking about it gives rise to a surface or hypersurface if the variables are more than two and it can uh, give us domes and uh, bowels and within those domes and bowels there can be peaks and there can be bottoms these are the points that we are concerned with as an economist that we want to find the maximum of a favorable variable and minimum of a, of an unfavorable variable so if we look at it in in this diagram it's a surface and you can see that there are peaks and bowels in it below we have a bowl and uh, here above we have peaks and uh, at this uh, peak of the dome we can say that we are local and global maximum because uh, in this range it is a local maximum but if we consider the whole range it is also a maximum so both from local point of view as well as from global global point of view it is a maximum when it comes to local maximum uh, it's it's a certain uh, area in which this um, uh, dome has a maximum value otherwise if we consider it from the overall point of view of the surface it will be limited only to uh, this area only and not in the whole because there is another peak which is higher than this peak so this is only a local maximum and then uh, at the bottom we have a bowl and its bottom is uh, local as well as uh, minimum global minimum because within this range it is a minimum as well as in the overall range it is also the minimum so after visualizing the maximum minimum in case of uh, two choice variables we can make a graph in this way in which we are trying to um, show the first order conditions this is a 3d Cartesian coordinate x and y axis and then z axis the perpendicular one and this is the dome that we have and in this dome we can um, consider the peak which is here and at this peak we can take the first order derivative that is uh, derivative of the function with respect to y and this would be the derivative of the function with respect to x and you can see that zy is parallel to the y-axis and zx is parallel to the x-axis so these are the two axes um, that have parallel uh, rays these are the rays that can be represented with the first order uh, derivatives and they are put equal to zero because you want to make them the first order condition we can visualize this in an another way that is the way in which we have um, a, bo a bowl the bottom of which is here and we can calculate zy here and we can also calculate zx here and they will be equal to zero again the, this is the derivative with respect to y of the given function and this is the function the derivative of the function with respect to x and both of them should be equal to zero to make it uh, the, f the first order condition so th then we uh, can come to the next thing now this is an interesting diagram and it is clarifying a certain situation uh, you can see that it's a seat on which we can sit and do the horse riding and it is known as saddle and uh, from the side it looks like this and from front it looks like this but if we consider a diagram similar to this we can see that this is a point where y axis is um, horizontal and here we have x axis and then we have z axis 
if you consider this point it is a minimum as per this curve and at the same point becomes a maximum from the point of view of this uh, slope or this curve. So you can see it is also minimum as well as a maximum. That is if we sit on the seat um, we will be at the point where minimum and maximum are present and because uh, if we consider our position uh, from front it will be a minimum at which we are sitting but from the sides that is where we are having our legs we will have a maximum point because our legs will be below it and we will be above it so this is a dual personality stationary point it is stationary because the slope is zero here And it has dual personality because it is maximum as well as minimum at the same point. So another similar situation is when we have neither a maximum nor a minimum. So this is another interesting situation in addition to the saddle point that we have a point which is neither a maximum nor a minimum because uh, there are higher points than this and there are lower points than this. Here again it's a point which is neither a maximum nor a minimum because there are higher points and there are lower points. This again is another uh, similar point because it is neither a maximum nor a minimum. So such a situation is known as inflection point because inflection means bend in a curve. So it's just a bend, it's neither the maximum nor minimum, it's just a bend in the curve. And a very significant um, identification of this point is that the slope remains the same. Before it, the slope was negative and after it, it is still negative. Before it, it was positive and after it, it is still positive. So the slope is not changing before and after this inflection point. So now we summarize the um, optimization conditions. We are talking about a relative extremum that is a maximum and a minimum respectively. So we have a function z in terms of x and y. The first order condition is a necessary condition and that is when we put the first order derivative is equal to 0. Again, in, in, even if it is a maximum or a minimum condition will be the same. That is the first order derivatives become equal to 0. The second order condition has two parts. One is the second order condition necessary and the other is second order condition sufficient. So if we consider the second order condition necessary, it says that the second order direct uh, partial derivatives, they should be negative when there is a maximum and second order direct partial derivatives should be positive if it, there is a minimum. After it, uh, the second order condition has a sufficient part as well. So in the sufficient part, there is an inequality like this and fxx and fyy their product should be greater than fxy square and uh, so it is also greater than zero in this case as it was in the case of a maximum so it depends basically upon the uh, necessary condition that if we will have a maximum or a minimum depending upon the negativity and the positivity of these derivatives. Then we should also consider the possibility of inflection and settle point. Um, inflection point again we will have in the second order necessary condition these um, derivatives that is the second order partial uh, direct derivatives they will be uh, they will be allowed to have a max uh, z positive or a negative value and uh, this condition however will be inverted because this was a greater sign but now it's a less than sign. When it comes to settle point these derivatives will be uh, negative and positive as you can see there are alternative signs initially it is negative and the second value is positive. 
and when it comes to the second part of the second order condition that is the sufficient part it will be inverted that is less than sign will be used here so this is again uh, dependent upon these conditions the second order necessary condition that will determine the fate of the um, point that we are uh, considering and then there is also another possibility the final possibility that when the uh, analysis cannot uh, be done or any recommendation about the nature of the point cannot be made that is the test is inconclusive this happens when the second order condition its uh, second part that is the sufficient part shows that both of these are equal when these are equal it means that we have none of these situations so th th this is that certain situation in which we have a sense of inconclusiveness and we also know that fxy is equal to fyx uh, and that is due to uh, Young's theorem and if we have a product of these two it will be written as fxy whole square because both of them are equal so we can do a numerical to see which uh, of the points uh, can exist here the numerical value uh, the numerical is here in which the value of this function z is given we have x and y variables in it uh, we have the first order condition and for that we differentiate the function with respect to x primarily and with respect to y respectively which are the two independent variables or the choice variables we can take the derivative of it very easily we have done it and we can also take the derivative of this uh, uh, in with respect to y which is also done here solving this we get the values of x that is plus minus 7 and solving this we get the values of y which is plus minus 3 critical points are here plus minus 7 plus minus 3 so we can make various combinations of these x and y um, ordered pair uh, we can take the positive versions of them we can take their negative versions and we can take the positive and negative and negative and positive values out of these two uh, coordinates now these are the four possible uh, points that we can investigate we can see at which uh, of these points can um, they uh, can be a maximum or a minimum or a saddle point or any inflection point so this is the uh, second order direct partial derivative with respect to x and the same with respect to y we can do this very easily by taking the derivative of uh, zx again with respect to x and derivative of zy with respect to y again then we have zxx and this is equal to um, minus 42 uh, this will happen when we put the value uh, here because we know that the value is 7 3 the first point the second point is B the values of X and Y are 7 and minus 3 and at point C the values are minus 7 and 3 and at point D the values are minus 7 and minus 3 so we can find out the values of uh, zx x and zyy at all four of these points for example i can solve it for the first point that is a point and we know that zxx is equal to minus 6 x the value of uh, x in at point a is 7 so writing 7 here will give me minus 42 so this is the value that we have found here minus 42 for zyy i know that its value is 12 y and the value of y here is 3 so i can write this 3 here and it will give me the answer which will be 36 so 36 is the answer of zyy at 7 3 point so in this way you can do all of these calculations by uh, s substituting the values of x and y in those points and now 
we are going to uh, analyze the first point that is point a at which value of x was 7 and y value of y was 3. We know that we have to check the conditions and the conditions require us to check the second order direct partial derivative it's minus 42 and 36 as we just found and uh, one of them is negative and the other one is positive. So in this situation uh, we have a saddle point because the signs are alternative negative sign and then the positive sign and now let's check the other point the point 2 which is point B at it the values are 7 and minus 3 and z x x and z y y they are there and uh, we have already found their values by putting the values in their uh, equations 42 and 36 so uh, now we are going to see if their values are in accordance to our requirements um, So the first uh, value is negative as well as the negative. Other value is also negative. When both uh, z x x and z y y are negative, it means that we have a maximum point. However, the possibility of inflection cannot be ruled out. For that, what we do is that we compare these two terms. That is the product of these derivatives that we found, and the square of cross partial uh, derivative. Um, so after putting the values we have um, a greater than sign here which means that we have a maximum because if we had a less than sign it would have meant an inflection point which is not the case here. So let's talk about the third point which is point C. Uh, in point C we had uh, 42 and 36 these were the values that we found both of them are uh, positive so we can have a minimum but at the same time an inflection point is also possible so for that we check the sufficient condition at the second order level and this is that condition and since it is greater than uh, sign in the in between these two values so we have a minimum instead of an inflection point and then we have point 4 and for point 4 uh, we have found the value of zxx and zyy and we can see that the first value is positive second value is negative so therefore what we have is um, zxx and zy they are having alternative signs it means that we have a settle point so in this way we have analyzed four points from uh, one graph and we have seen that if we are dealing with a maximum at a certain point or a minimum or a saddle point or an inflection point. We can do uh, further um, examples for the sake of rehearsal. This is one of them and this would be the second one. These can be solved uh, for the sake of uh, uh, maximum, minimum, inflection and saddle points. I hope this will serve good for your uh, rehearsal and better understanding of uh, the situation in which we optimize a function that has more than one choice variables. Thank you.